The war on terror. A warning from the CIA chief, Al-Qaeda is still at work planning terror attacks. Also, that American Taliban denied a decision on John Walker Lynn's request to be released on bail. The women of Enron, the whistleblower, the journalist, the people who exposed Enron, all women. Tonight, the women who brought down the men of Enron. In depth, Ronald Reagan, the former president turns 91. His enduring legacy to a nation once again united by war and patriotism. And the fleecing of America, your tax dollars. They were supposed to fix the nation's roads. But wait till you see where your money went. Is this a case of highway robbery? From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening. The director of the CIA went before Congress today to defend his agency and to warn that for all of the successes in Afghanistan, the terrorist network of Osama bin Laden still is up and running. George Tenet faced some tough questions from the Senate Intelligence Committee, and in turn, he had some tough warnings. NBC Jim Mikloszewski at the Pentagon again for us tonight. In his first public appearance in September 11th, CIA Director George Tenet found himself and his agency under attack. The Senate Intelligence Committee demanding to know why the CIA did not predict or prevent the terrorist attacks against the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Why were we utterly uh, unaware of, I don't believe of planning and execution of the September 11th attacks? In other words, what went wrong? Tenet said the CIA was investigating a general threat against the U.S., but the planning behind September 11th was so secret, it was almost impossible to detect. There will be nothing you do that will guarantee 100% certainty here. It will never happen. Senators also wanted to know why the CIA could not infiltrate bin Laden's al-Qaeda network. What the fellows at the Dodge City Coffee Clutch ask me is, if John Walker and Lynn could get to talk to Osama bin Laden, why in the heck couldn't the CIA get an agent uh, um, closer to him? Well, I'm not going to do this in open session, but you better tell everybody at the cafe it's not true. Tenet then laid out a sobering, terrifying assessment of the threats that still exist against America. Despite the battles we have won in Afghanistan, we remain a nation at war. Tenet says he's not sure bin Laden is still alive, but warns al-Qaeda cells in 68 countries are still planning attacks, and that Iran is harboring some top al-Qaeda leaders. Is it still correct to call Iran today the, the world's largest state sponsor of uh, terrorism or proliferation of terrorism? Yes, sir, I, I, I believe that. That North Korea and Iraq continue to build weapons of mass destruction. And ongoing violence in the Middle East could spill over into a new wave of terrorism against the U.S. But tonight, U.S. officials report what could be one small victory. Earlier this week, a CIA unmanned drone fired a Hellfire missile at a convoy in eastern Afghanistan believed to contain senior al-Qaeda leaders. The missile scored a direct hit. It's not known yet exactly who may have been killed, Tom. Thanks very much, NBC. Jim Mikloszewski at the Pentagon tonight. The so-called American Taliban, John Walker Lynn, will remain in jail through his trial. A federal judge today denied him bail, and his lawyer unloaded on Attorney General Ashcroft. More on this story tonight from NBC's Pete Williams. John Walker Lynn's parents came to court today hoping they could take home their son, who's three days shy of his 21st birthday. But prosecutors argued strongly against his release, claiming Lind repeatedly expressed hostility toward the U.S. in emails they say he sent to his mother when he was overseas. Two years ago, the government says Lind suggested she move to England, adding, I don't really know what your big attachment to America is all about. What has America ever done for anybody? And last year, prosecutors say he wrote, I don't really want to see America again. Lynn's lawyers argued today that he's not a dangerous person. When he went to fight in Afghanistan, they said he joined with the Taliban, a group that received millions from the West in humanitarian aid to eradicate poppies used to make illegal drugs. And when he went to fight the Northern Alliance, they said the U.S. was condemning that group. But a federal magistrate ordered Lynn held without bond, declaring there's too much risk he'd try to leave the country. Releasing him to his parents, the judge said, would provide little more than a way to get early notice if he fled. Lynn's lawyers today also accused the government of trying to blame John Walker Lynn for every terror crisis from bin Laden to anthrax. I'd ask the attorney general to not take it out on John Lynn, because in my view, 
They have brought up the cannon to shoot the mouse. Some legal experts say Walker's defense faces a double challenge, fighting the government's case and trying to change public opinion. There's no question the defense is battling upstream in this case. There has been an enormous amount of press about this, and there's been an enormous amount of statements that have uh, demonized him. The government today also denied that Lind was mistreated overseas, noting that as of early December, he was eating three packaged military meals a day, the same as U.S. forces in Afghanistan. Pete Williams, NBC News, Alexandria, Virginia.